Hello and welcome to today's online intelligence briefing, focusing on future combat aircraft capabilities and programs. My name is John Sneller and I'm the Head of Aviation here at Jane's and I'll be moderating today's session. Presenting today along uh, with myself is uh, Alessandra Giovanzanti, who's our Senior Aviation Analyst, who will talk about future fighter aircraft concepts and characteristics, and Gareth Jennings, our Air Desk Editor, who will provide an overview of the currently active sixth generation fighter programs. Finally, I will present the last section of the presentation on market demands, drivers, and trends. So why are we talking about potentially the sixth and last generation of fighter aircraft? Well, our general view is that in conventional terms, we are at a crossroads between what were traditional combat type of uh, uh, capabilities and new fused capabilities where combat aircraft will be tasking to a much greater degree off-board assets. So that's why we've put the question out there and we'll be very happy to have your, uh, your feedback on that. So that concludes my introduction and here you can see uh, the outline of today's uh, presentation. But before I uh, hand over to Alessandra, I'd like to uh, uh, highlight that the information uh, we've used to, to for, for, for today is compiled from a variety of Jane's content, but particularly Jane's Defence Industry and Markets, uh, which you can see uh, up here. So I will now hand over to Alessandra. Thank you, John. I will now provide a brief introduction to the concept of sixth generation fighter aircraft. Sixth generation fighter aircraft will involve major developments in sensor data fusion, avionics, power plant and weapon systems, while also incorporating new advanced airframe configurations. The new fighter aircraft will operate together with offboard assets, such as medium altitude long range UAV, swarms of smaller UAVs, early generation combat aircraft and ISTAR platforms, by data links and networks, to bring about a new and flexible dimension concept of warfighting. Information dominance will enable a fighter jet to both launch attacks and function as an extended aerial ISR node. Operating as a part of a dispersed yet intertwined combat sensor network, the aircraft will be able to transmit relevant data to all the other components of the combat system. The key enabler for achieving information superiority and enhancing the effectiveness of fighting in highly contested environments will be sensor cooperation, where sensor systems cooperate among each other to build a picture of the threat and target. As a result, the most suitable mission profile can be tasked while maximizing sensor interconnectivity, which together brings about the new concept of network sensing warfare. Network sensing warfare allows to improve, uh, for improved situational awareness, greater information sharing, and streamline a well-defined decision and command flow. Most importantly, well-designed network-centric systems and, uh, and procedures provide a prioritized level of information, neither less or more, to those who need it and when they need it. The future network architecture will also be open, scalable, and integrated, with each platform, whether man or unmanned, uh, will be a node of a wider network. All platforms will talk to each other and enter or exit the network in a dynamic mode. So, how will the next generation fighter look like? Well, it will likely have smart skins, stealthy oblique structural designs with sensors embedded into the airframe. The absence of an external antenna, pod, or structural array of some kind removes otherwise more radar detectable structures from the airframe, while preserving stealth characteristics and maintaining an even silhouette. The metamaterials used for the skin will be capable of changing the way radio waves bounce off the surface to limit the echo on a radar. And gene technology will continue to develop with new materials, better specific fuel consumption, and lower observability. The ability to operate supersonically without reheat will be a key characteristic in reducing infrared signature at higher speed. At present, uh, twin engine configurations are preferred for redundancy, system power provision, and pure power in combat, aided by thrust vectoring nozzles. However, conformal sensor systems will present some challenges. 
Work is still ongoing to find the optimal design that provides a required sense of performance and structural integrity, thus ensuring that sensor development and manufacture needs are aligned with the airframe's needs. Sensors in, must, must be able to withstand the aerodynamic and structural forces, and metamaterials and manufacturing techniques are at present uh, still extensive. The existence of a future combat air system, or FCAS, was first revealed by Airbus in 2016, when it revealed it was working with the Bundeswehr to identify future threats and capability needs to inform its work on a future combat aircraft. This was to be built around technologies available in the 2030 to 2040 timeframe. Later that year, the German government included a still undefined FCAS in its inaugural air capability strategy paper saying it was talking with potential European partners as it looked to develop a potential replacement for the Panavia Tornado. Nothing else was heard of the project publicly until November 2018 when Airbus briefed the FCAS concept and the new generation fighter that would sit at the heart of it that the company was developing alongside Dassault to satisfy the future requirements of both Germany and France. Airbus outlined some of the key concepts and technologies, including stealth, data fusion for command and control, hypersonic and laser weaponry, artificial intelligence, manned-unmanned teaming, swarming technologies, upgradable software, 3D printing, as well as affordability and sustainability. The company noted also that the timeline had shifted to the right and that the resulting platform would come after the tornado replacement, initially augmenting the Eurofighter before eventually replacing it. As it stands, the FCAS will comprise the New Generation Fighter, or NGF, a manned or optionally manned aircraft, loyal wingmen, unmanned aircraft known as remote carriers, the European male RPAS unmanned aircraft, an ultra-low observable unmanned combat air vehicle, future cruise missiles and other legacy airborne platforms operating in the future battle space. The combination of NGF and the remote carriers is known as the Next Generation Weapon System, or NGWS. Roles for the NGF will broadly mirror those already conducted by today's combat aircraft. One significant additional capability is the need to be a control ship for unmanned aerial vehicles. The NGF will also be optimized for carrier operations from the outset, following a similar developmental path to that of the Rafale. And France's nuclear deterrence mission will necessitate that the pilot be on board for that role at least. In terms of a program timeline to date, in April 2018 at the ELA Air Show in Berlin, France and Germany approved the FCAS project, with Dassault named as the lead for the future fighter element and Airbus given the supporting role. In December 2018, Spain announced its intent to join the project and formally joined with a letter of intent on the 14th of February 2019. In February 2019, the French and German governments launched the joint study concept for the FCAS project. In 2019, Safran and MTU Aero Engines signed an industrial agreement for the FCAS engine demonstrator. In June 2019, Spain formally signed to join the program at the Paris Air Show, while at the same time, Dassault and Airbus announced that they had submitted their industrial bids to their respective governments and that they anticipated the launch of the demonstrator phase of the project in the fourth quarter of 2019. So the reasons for this generational shift uh, in fighter technologies can be summarized as follows. There is obsolescence of legacy systems from current, the current generation of fighter aircraft with increasingly high costs of maintenance. Availability of new disruptive technologies have changed and are changing the warfare environment dramatically. And the emergence of new threats that current technologies cannot handle, such as improved air-to-air -air and air-to-ground defensive and offensive capabilities, and the improvements of stealth technology. So that is the end of the main part of the briefing, and I've now uh, put some general key takeaways from this uh, uh, webinar so you can consider uh, any questions that you might have in the future. I hope you'll be able to join us at the next future briefing, which uh, will be on the UK's departure from the EU. Thank you and goodbye.